jugs and pots hopefully that will allow us to get back to our uh, words what was I saying yeah our uh, beekeeping once we allow a few more of those to happen looks like our military is pretty much all trained enough now that I would send them into combat I would expect to lose some especially with their lack of armor but I think with the amount that are there we could actually send them into combat and reasonably expect them to kill a few things. Now the reason I've built the um, the barracks up here instead of down there, I think I mentioned this briefly, but was something called cave adaption, which means if your dwarves don't go outside for a set period of time, they then just get violently sick whenever they do. And if you look at the combat records, you remember seeing the uh, the announcements of things just retching and vomiting instead of doing any kind of attacks or anything else. Your guys would basically do that all the time whenever they came to the surface. Now, I think that hunter died, so we can actually uh, get rid of that Bone Bolt's order. At least for a while. Someone's become a Fisher Dwarf. I think what we might do is furniture here we're gonna go down to lead when we can find it lead there it is we want some lead chains because we are going to attempt to set up our hospital so we're gonna want 10 chains we're also going to want from our mason we'll get this guy to do it work orders Q table now we're gonna order a lot more than we need here we're gonna order 60 rock tables from this guy and then from the one further down, we're going to go to, we're going to cancel the slabs now, but we're going to go to P, work orders, we're going to get thrones, and we're going to get 60 of these as well. So that should keep them a little bit busy. The chains we do have a specific use in mind for, we're going to combine those with the tables, at the mechanics workshop here to make what's called a traction bench. Now a traction bench is something we use for the hospital to set bones and it's basically, you know the medieval rack? Well when your bones are broken they set wrong quite often. If you were to break your bones in the medieval times your arm would be pointing at like a 45 degree angle in the opposite direction to your elbow and you would just have to live with that. The way dwarves fix that is to put you in the rack stretch the break out so that they can put it back in the proper seat in like the proper place we have we do very similar things now but I imagine for dwarves it's a little bit more unpleasant than it is for us they don't have medication unless you count mead which I'm guessing they would count that as a medicine speaking of are you going to collect honey now without freaking out oh we have a horse downstairs let's put that in the pasture that is one of my favorite things about DF Hack. I don't actually use it for, like there, there are things you can do where you can actually tell DF Hack to say mine an entire ore vein out instead of you like picking through. But I like the announcements it gives me because I feel like the dwarves would uh, go over and tell their mayor, hey, by the way, our animals are starving. You want to get on that? Let's go take a look at our uh, Wait, why can I not see you know, stocks? Let's go take a look at blocks, see if he's updated this yet. Oh, we're in bins. He seems to think we have a lot more blocks than we do. Maybe I am missing something. So let's go to B, big C, wall. Oh, I bet we have a bunch at the bottom of the river. That's fine, because I think we might actually have just enough to finish our wall. Awesome. Now, do we have a mechanic anymore? Did we lose our mechanic? We did not. Nice, our mechanic survived. Now, 
Now once that's done, it's going to mean that this entryway here is the only way in and out of the fort without climbing over walls or swimming across, um, well, swimming across the, uh, the river. I know it looks like people are still going to freak out about, um, their jobs, but we'll let them freak out for a little while, maybe that'll blow over. Experiencing emotional shock. We're going to get that for a couple of seasons still. Just people uh, being generally unhappy because they lost a bunch of family members to an act of God. Total, totally unpreventable. Absolutely no way we could have seen that coming. <clears throat> but there we are. The first level of the wall is complete, which means it is time to build our bridge again. Now then, we're going to build to fill this gap which is five wide. We're going to build five out as well. In fact, we'll go, we'll go eight out. It looks a bit better. So what are we going to build this out of? Well, we're going to go fancy. We're going to have a big lead drawbridge gate. Oh, hold on. I didn't set that right. So build again to our bridge. I'm going to throw this out here. And remember the raise direction? Well, we want this one to actually raise to the left, into the wall. And again, we're going to build this out of lead bars because we're just that cool and we can do things like that. Oh, somebody is uh, taken by a fair mood. Is that a dwarven child? Cool. We're going to turn beekeeping off again. I think we might have to just dismantle the hives and forget about beekeeping for this fort. Because I think the things they want to use are at the bottom of a river. Claim the Crafts Dwarfs Workshop again. They really like that. I'm really hoping that someone will claim the, um, the Blacksmith's Workshop at some point. Oh. Doesn't look like we have what he wants. Is he going to give us a hint? Has the aspect of one fair. But he's just... Strange mood, it's not telling us what he wants, but we don't have it. Okay, so, I know we don't have bone. So we're going to go into animals here. And we are going to slaughter the water buffalo cow. And... Sure, we'll take the reindeer cow, slaughter this lamb as well, baby llama. We'll slaughter the horse. We're going to get rid of all those. If he wants bone, or leather, he will get it from this. Okay, so he did want, looks like he did want the bone. That's not all he wanted, but he is still running around grabbing things. I think the bone was the only thing on his wish list that he didn't have. Looks like he's grabbing a metal bar of some kind. I'm guessing the silver. Okay, so we grabbed some bone and some metal. He's probably going to make like a cup or an earring, something insubstantial. Is that under construction? Needs architecture. Well, we know we have a couple of architects in the fort, so hopefully they will... Uh, Get on that pretty soon and we can actually have our bridge now it's a bridge over nothing but it's it's closer to say it's a door because it will fold up into the wall and complete the wall so no one can get across the moat didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it but it is it does exist in some fashion you know I think we're actually just gonna uh, turn on architecture for everyone it's not a skill you're going to use often. Especially not really often enough to level it up. But it's one of those things that, if you don't have it, it's going to get in your way. Okay, so a shift Xanos. I think that's an instrument, so we're going to shift L. And you can see these are our things here. So let's take a look at um, our original crown was called Marv Woman the Decisive Crypt. Then we made this ring. We didn't look at that at the time, but we're going to now. This is called the Roars of Winter. 
It's worth 4,800 dwarf bucks. It is all craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with yakbone and encircled with bands of pecan wood. This object menaces with spikes of permison wood. So that's literally just a wooden ring. Not super interesting there. Then let's look at the dot of wires. A Xanos. It's worth 10,000 dwarf bucks. This is a schist Xanos. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of rectangular schist cabochons. The object menaces with spikes of lead. On the image is an image of dwarves in water buffalo horn. The dwarves are traveling. The artwork relates to the foundation of Rim Treaty by the defied pillars in the Chronicle board in 9. Okay. The Xanos is a small handheld straight metal horn. The musician blows into the instrument and selects pitch by adjusting a, side, a slide. The instrument has three octave range going from middle to a very high pitch. The instrument has a thin, strained, crisp timber. Well, that's cool. We have an instrument. The kid just wanted to, uh, I don't know, make make his uh, make his voice heard, so he designed a really annoying sound to make an instrument. Actually, kind of like a really weird mix between a, a didgeridoo and a trumpet, but high pitched. That's a kazoo, right? The kid just basically just made a kazoo with a slide. Or like one of those um, pull whistles that uh, Sideshow Bob and Mel used to use in The Simpsons. I haven't seen that show in forever. Where's that guy going? Are they? What are they doing? Are they fishing or are they still drinking out there? I think they're fishing. I'm hoping somebody will, uh, needs any metal smithing. So once our metal smithing is our smith, once they're done with the chains, which they're on the last one now, they'll work their way upstairs and finish off our giant metal gates. Now the reason I had them do that chain is I'm actually probably going to make them make some uh, lead crafts at some point to trade with uh, trade with the homeland when they come back. Is that them there now? I think that is. That's them constructing the uh, large metal gates for our city. And again, I don't think of this as a bridge. I'm I'm imagining a gate kind of dug into the floor that will will use chains and kind of crank it up, and as it grinds into place against stone, and then locks the fort in place. Now, luckily, this isn't one of those constructions that can be interrupted by people walking across it. But there we are, our gate is in place. But right now, it's useless. It's just a piece of flat terrain. So, what do we do to make it useful? Oh. And now we've got uh, another another hillock near us. Uh, we still haven't become an official land. But we're going to go to our, our big floor here. And then in the barracks, the old, the old area, we're going to press shift. Is it shift T? Yes, shift T. We're going to build a lever. We're going to put it just up here. That's going to take a direct mechanism. So our mechanic should hopefully build that pretty quickly. Experiencing emotional shock. You know, I don't blame you. But at some point you're going to have to get over the fact I drowned most of your family. It's been like three months. Since, uh, since, I mean, you can still see them, you know, but we, uh, we put some rocks down here that we put the names on and threw them in a cave, so I don't know what more these people want from me, really. Now, none of the pigs have had piglets yet. I expect that that would have happened by now. See, who is, who is our mechanic? I know we gave someone the mechanic's job. 
I think we did. Yes, we did. Who did we give that to? Uh, Vabok. Oh, I think we might be saving. Yeah, spring has arrived. It's going to take a while to save this here. But, uh, there we are. Let's go have a look. What is Vabok up to? Uh, finding these guys can be a pain. Look at all those kids. Look at all those useless kids. There he is, Vabok, the expedition leader, actually. Let's follow him around. What are you doing? You're conducting a meeting. I can see that. No, it's the, uh, the outpost liaison has probably arrived, so... He's going to entertain him in his quarters, I guess. He's going in between two people's rooms. Which of these is your room, Vabok? So you're just walking into the boyer's room, like, yeah, this is cool. This is okay. That's not okay, dude. Not okay at all. Now then, we don't have too, too much wood left, so we might try and find some more of that soon. Ha, so the lever's done. So now what we're going to do, we're going to hover over the lever with Q. We're going to go with... A for add new task. I'm going to press B to link it up to a bridge. It's going to select which bridge. We only have one. So I'm going to press enter. And then that's going to take two mechanisms. One to put in the bridge. One to put in the lever. The mechanic will put those in. And then we can raise and lower that bridge into the wall. Making it effectively a giant gate. And with that we are much much safer from attacking enemies. So we have our inner courtyard. We have this outer area. I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do with this yet. But having two walls definitely makes us a lot safer. Now our yak calf must have been very, 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 very young when she showed up because she still hasn't matured and our pigs still haven't uh, given birth even though we're like two or three years in at this point plenty of kittens running around as they um, multiply to the point of extremes we will start to butcher them but I think what we're gonna do I'm gonna pop down here to our main level we're going to go over to our lever, we're going to give it a test pull, so add new task, pull the lever with shift P, we're going to press N for do this now. And someone should run along and poop, there we are, so they've pushed that. Now the gate doesn't raise instantly, but there we are, there's now a big lead slab in between anyone getting inside the fort. Now I know lead isn't the strongest metal, but... I don't think people can destroy that. If they can, it's going to take a lot, a lot of effort. So we're going to re-pull that lever because we do have people outside. We're going to put that to now. And then if we go up, we'll watch the, uh, the gates open. Any minute now. There we are. Now there is another benefit to that, which is... An elven... Ah, get away, you blackguards. Yeah, the, the other benefit to having the, the lead gate there is it lowers perfectly onto the ground beneath it and it forms what is called an Atom Smasher. So an Atom Smasher is a dwarven thing where if you have, say, a refuse stockpile, you can put it under a bridge, turn the bridge on, it will come down and crush absolutely everything in the stockpile so small that it is no longer an item it will just delete it from the world and that's what an atom smasher is i have also seen bridges employed as traps in that way where people will have them on the sides of a natural earth bridge that they've channeled everything out away from they'll have bridges on the side that just go up and down They'll wait for enemies to be halfway along and then have someone repeatedly pull levers so the bridges just come up and down, up and down, up and down. And they will either 
land on goblins or invaders of any kind and crush them, or they'll start throwing them into trap pits beneath the bridge. Now, speaking of traps, we want to build some, but we don't really have anything to build them with. We could go with stonefall traps, which would use the stone we have down here, and we would literally just drop it on people. That's not a bad starting trap, and I think that might be what we go with. Oh, is that us? Ebalathal, I think we've just become a barony. We have, which means English now needs a whole lot of stuff. We need to make another noble's quarters. And this one needs to be fancier than this one. So we're going to get on that. And we're going to make this a nice and fancy room. Because the guy's going to need a throne room. And we're going to make... We're going to future-proof this, essentially, because... After Royal Barony, we will become something slightly better and then something slightly better, I think. So instead of a, an all-purpose room, like that guy got, the Baron is going to get a throne room separate from his dining room. How many white did I make that? I think it's like that. And then back to... Yep, that's the same. Yep, so that's going to take a little while for the guy to mine out. Now we're going to smooth all that and make it a nice cool um, set of rooms for the Baron. But that's super cool for us. In fact, if we look at our fort, we've made a total value in our fort of 158,916 dwarf books. You can see that in the created wealth. A lot of it is in other objects, which I assume is our trade goods. We have four spear dwarves, we have three hammer dwarves, and three mace dwarves. It's what we expected. The, um, the spear dwarves will cripple people, while the mace and hammer dwarves will crush their skulls. If we make another squad, we will make them ranged. Well, we will make another squad as soon as we uh, have time. Still a lot of people with no jobs. And I think we might be at the point now where... Oh, nice. We don't smell like glean at all. So I think we're going to... Um, we're going to need some more bins. In. We'll make 30 of those. And yeah, I think what we're going to do, we're going to build workshops. We're going to build a leather works. I'm sure we'll build our direct box. Because we're going to try and make ourselves a ranged squad. It might not be a full squad of 10. But we have a lot of dwarves who are doing nothing, basically. And we want to build... A sniper tower for them up here so what we're going to start off with is build big C walls and you remember what I said about how if we would built floor along the very end here we would not now be able to build walls here so we're gonna build walls here for their training room and look do we have any more blocks we don't so we're gonna to have to wait before we can uh, finish this off. Oh, what's going on there? Honey badger. Let's take a look. Uh, kicks the honey badger in the throat with his left foot, miss bruising the skin. The force bends the neck, tearing apart the fat and bruising the muscle. Bites the honey badger in the right front paw. Okay, let's find the honey badger, because it seems like this thing was fighting more than one. Yeah, the military part punches the honey badger in the head with her left hand, and the injured part collapses into a lump of gore. An artery has been opened by the attack. Yeah, I, I think it would have. So it looks like this honey badger came in, enraged, tried to uh, mess with our military. But the first thing that happened is its left rear paw was stabbed off by one of the uh, spear dwarves. People are still experiencing emotional shock. 
I guess that's just bound to happen there. One of the dwarves is just cleaning up the mess from that honey badger because that is the home zone. Let's check if we can turn on beekeeping again yet. Someone with a zero in beekeeping, but I think they've went up to a one now. Rovard. Fingers crossed, buddy. Nope. I'm not sure what his job item is. I don't know what he's getting so upset about. We've built plenty of pots and jugs downstairs. We're gonna let this tick along and see how long it, how long he just cancels. I'm hoping that eventually Dwarf Fortress will get the message that uh, we have other jugs for him. We did build other jugs, didn't we? Yeah, we've built a lot more jugs. Looks like we've built some more bone bolts as well. Which is cool, because we're going to use those for our military dwarves. Leatherworks is built. Cool. So what we're going to order here, we're going to order five leather armors. We're going to order five leather helms. Five leather leggings. Oh, yeah, we... Do that the proper way. Leather armor five. Make leather the leggings five. Leather helms five. Quivers five. Now we should have enough leather for that with all of the things we've uh, killed through uh, butchery and hunting. We do have the uh, the leather worker. Who I think actually is Robod, who is just not happy about his beekeeping at all. Really not having a good time with that, so we're just going to let it be. And we're also going to order leather low boot. We're going to order 10 of those, because we'll only make one boot per order. And we do need those in pairs. And then if we have enough leather after that, we will make some leather bucklers to go with our uh, ranged people. But what else can we assign them? Well, I think what we might do is get some plant gathering going on this, this new wave. And we're just going to order a bunch of them. Looks like they actually might have already went to, yeah, there was quite a few things still designated. So they're just going to go gather those plants. It'll keep them busy while we uh, get started. We already have the crossbows because we ordered 10 of those made from wood earlier. Looks like someone's out there fishing. don't think anyone's been hunting recently. There's just that uh, that honey badger that walked in as the uh, military was walking around and just got absolutely wrecked. Doesn't look like we have many plump helmets to be used in the fort. In the, uh, in the what's it? Ah, please tell me we didn't make the miner gather plants. We have two miners there, and they're at the top, and they are, in fact, probably gathering plants, aren't they? No. We'll take that off them. And then I think we might actually go make a silver pick. Because I've only ever seen one of those guys mining. And we need at least... Well, we have, we have two for a reason. Oh, we can't make a silver pick. Okay, well, I think we will actually make... Um, We're going to go to P here, and I didn't realize that silver was actually somewhat better than than copper. So we're actually going to make five short swords, and then we're going to go to forge again out of silver. We're going to order five battle axes. Now, I don't expect our military dwarves upstairs 
we'll swap to these weapons now because they've reached an adequate level of training with their current weapons. Basically, a recruit will pick up any weapon. Someone who has attained the rank of Spear Dwarf will at first attempt to find a spear. If they can't find that, they might go on to make, um, you know, then they'd go on to the next skill level. So what I'm planning on doing with these, the axes are just nice to have around in case someone wants one in another thing. Oh, someone's throwing tantrums. That's not good. The reason I'm making these, I intend to give our ranged squad the option of backup weapons. So they will have both their bolts, their crossbows, but they will also have a leather buckler or shield, and on top of that they will have a sword or axe at their hip. So if something does manage to get past our uh, melee dwarves, they'll have the, the other dwarves to ten, contend with. Oh, a kitchen was toppled by the fishery worker. That's not good. He has actually just destroyed our kitchen. I'm going to build another one. Now he's wandering off with the rock. So we are going to have to... Um, justice, there are no criminals. Well, it's not entirely true. We're going to have to build a new kitchen. Yay, that animal has become a stray yak cow. That's good. That means we can start breeding yaks. I think we're going to go with gold prepare lavish meals now. Which just means that um, instead of making those really mediocre biscuits, we're going to start making like nice meals. Now we're going to keep an eye out because there are some of those new silver swords and axes in the uh, in the stockpile by now. But it doesn't look like the dwarves are switching, so it looks like I was right about that. The elves are leaving, that's good, we don't care about no damn dirty elves. They can go back to hugging their trees and hopefully they'll be hugging them as we cut them down and we can get through both at once. Now we haven't seen any sign of the um, goblins attacking us yet. We did settle near some and the reason they haven't is because we have um, so few dwarves. That it's basically there are conditions before people are allowed to siege you. One of them is a total amount of dwarves in your fortress. And, well, we kind of drowned some of ours. And I think that's actually put off any migrants that were on the way as well. I'm not entirely upset about that. We are going to order those trees chopped down, though. Get a bit more wood back in the fort. We are running quite low. Let's see. Have we got enough blocks yet? Oh, we have nine there. Hopefully we've got some of another kind. Construction present. Well, time to show you how to get rid of construction. You go to D for designate, N for remove construction. And it looks like I did accidentally build a floor there. Well, that's fine. It just means we can start building a wall on this other side. Huh, construction present there as well. Oh, we only have... Oh, no, we have plenty of schist blocks. I think I built that one over the door. Fact, let's uh let's stop doing that if that's gonna be awkward. Uh, designation cancel. You know, just leave that in place and we'll do this the easy way. We'll build this wall here. Ah, we can't. We are gonna have to remove that. But we are gonna order quickly this corner built before anything else because it's in an awkward place and dwarves can quite often uh, build themselves out, kind of like build the rest of the wall before building that bit and then they wouldn't be able to reach that bit. There is going to be a third floor to 
this tower, which will be an open roof with a fortification on. And fortifications, your dwarves can stand inside and shoot out. So our our second squad, which will be our ranged dwarves, will train inside this room. But they will fight on the roof. There we are. Schist blocks. That's uh, also building upstairs. Construction present. Gosh darn it. Uh, won't build that either, will they? No. Hmm. That's a pain. I think what we might actually do, designate X. We'll remove that. I'm sorry, building. I'm going to have to go to Q. Okay, well, we'll remove that one. We'll build Big C upstairs. Build that there. And then we should be able to just build a wall surrounding it. Once the once they've built that stairwell, anyway, we should be able to build a wall surrounding it. But uh, until then, we just got to kind of wait. There we are. So build big C walls, schist blocks. We can go up a level. We want to build a downstairs schist blocks, and then we're going to shift F for fortifications. But actually, no. We need to wait for that uh, that floor to be built. Here they come. Can they reach it all from there? Well, they haven't cancelled it, so we're going to build C floor. There we are. So we'll build, we'll just build the floor out of schist. That doesn't need to be anything fancy. But as you'll probably put together by now, when you build on top of a wall, it will be a floor that you can walk across but it's not a construction, it's a construction on the floor beneath. If you build a floor on top of something, just the way Dwarf Forest is coded, you then can't build other constructions on top of that. People are still experiencing that emotional shock. I think it's because they keep walking over the bodies of people they used to know. Just somebody that I used to know. Just full of emotional shock, these dwarves. Not gonna give it up, are they? No, it's actually going to take them quite a while to build this uh, this roof, just by virtue of how slow they're going to walk with the uh, the raw schist. Even with blocks, they walk slowly, but when they're just hugging a big boulder, it's going to take you a while to get just about anything done. I'm hoping somebody finishes off that wall. It's going to bug me if they don't. But while that's going on, let's go down here and check on our leatherworks. Looks like we are still... Uh, oh. Some migrants have arrived, despite the danger. Oh. I, I don't know what you mean by danger. I see no danger here. This is a danger-free zone. Highway, in fact, to a danger-free zone. Nearly done there. And then hopefully they'll... Someone will finish off that wall. They haven't suspended it. It's just inactive. But that makes me think that they can't reach it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove that wall. I'm going to build a floor there. They'll use that floor to reach that wall. 
I will then remove that floor and re-put a wall in. Sometimes you just have to get a little bit creative when it comes to uh, construction of walls and buildings in Dwarf Fortress when you're above ground. You can't just dig them out. I wonder how long those uh, skeletons will last down there. I don't know if these are actually just going to eventually be gone. I assume the, the trout and whatever else is in the river are actually slowly eating the dwarves. And then we're eating the trout. Just the cycle of life, really. Okay, so build big sea floor. Short schist, whatever that'll do. Now then, we're just about ready up the top. So, build big F. I know, sorry, build big C, then big F. We are going to start with fortifications. So, we're going to build these out of schist blocks. So, again, big F. We're going to do the corners first. Because as you've just seen, Dwarf Fortress can get a little bit finicky when it comes to, uh, well, when it comes to construction of basically any kind. Hopefully someone will get there to build the, uh, the floor and the wall before we've got too much of the fortification done. And when we're done with that, we will, uh, I'll show you how to set up a ranged squad and what is involved in that. And we'll probably call this episode there. We didn't get around to building our hospital. I guess we'll save that for next episode again. But what I am going to do is go and look how many new migrants we got. 19. For now, I'm just going to assign stone detailing to absolutely all of them. Because we need to detail out this room. Well, all three of these rooms when the miners are done. I honestly thought these guys would be done by now. They are going quite slowly. Guessing somebody's on the way up for this by now. But until then, build big C, big F, fortification, schist blocks, big F, schist blocks, big F, schist blocks, there we are. There we are. So build again, big C, big F. Get that one done. We now can come back down a level. We can press D for designate, N for remove structure. Remove that floor piece. And we'll be able to uh, put a fortification, uh, another wall back in there. Finish off this room being a room. And then we'll be able to finish off the fortifications above it. Like our backup weapons for the uh, second squad are just about done as well. So awesome, these rooms have been dug out now. We're going to designate this entire floor smoothed. And because that's being done, we're now going to order all of the furniture that we're going to need for that room. So. We're going to go to Q, we're going to go to this mason, we're going to order, we have doors, so we're going to order four statues, we already have tables and chairs being built, but we're going to go to here, we're going to order a nice bed, we're going to order four chests and four cabinets, in fact we have beds, we are going to order some doors. And then once one of those things has been done, we'll order the third door, because our nobles get nice wooden doors to annoy the elves and to prove how fancy and uh, rich they are, that they can afford to make things out of wood. I'm going to go schist blocks there again. And then big F up here, we'll finish off this bit of uh, fortification. And then the last one we can finish off when uh, the wall underneath it has been built. I do love the way these look. I um, I had a fort recently that had a lot, a lot of marble in it, just like an absolute ton of marble. 
but the marble fortifications look really bad in this tile set. And all the fortification is, is essentially, you know the very tops of castles on the towers, they have the raised stone that you can hide behind and then shoot out of? It's basically just that, it's not anything fancy. But we now have what will become a barracks for our ranged dwarves when we recruit some in just a minute here. So what does that entail? Well, we are going to need an armor stand and a weapon rack, same as normal, for these guys to do their standard combat training, but we're going to need something else. Now we'll order these from up here, so... Armor stand, weapon rack, we didn't want that on repeat. The other thing we're going to need is... We are going to need something for them to practice their shooting on. So, we're going to build, and then we're going to look down here for uh, its archery target, which is a capital A. And I think we're just going to have two of these here. We'll make them out of diorite blocks, sure. So capital A again, archery target, make them out of diorite blocks, and that should be A-OK. -okay. Someone will be on their way up to uh, make those now. Is that going to require, yeah it needs masonry to finish it off. So we'll just flick that on one or two of these guys down here. Not really super important. We need to wait for the armor stands anyway. Now the uh, the Baron's room is obviously quite significantly more fancy than the others, and that is by design. I was going to leave some pillars in here to be engraved, but I think we're just going to engrave every wall surface in here. So I can show you how that works when uh, we get around to it in just a minute. Well, might be more than a minute. Are these ready? No. How long do we think these are going to be? Going to be a hot minute there. They're nearly done. They're nearly done. In fact, how many do we have built now? I think we had... Yeah, we had plenty being done. Because we're going to need some uh, armor stands and weapon racks for our uh, noblemen as well. Who is that right now? Who is the Baron? The Baron is English Besmanarch. And they have issued a mandate as well. They want us to make picks. That is very, very unfortunate. We don't have... Let's check our blocks. Stocks. Bars. We have three iron bars. We're gonna have. To, we were gonna use those to make armor, if you remember. But because our nobleman has issued a mandate, which is to make picks, we are instead going to have to use those iron bars to make some iron picks. So weapons and armor, iron pick by two. That's really unfortunate. We were trying to save those up so that we get a, a decent quantity and make some armor. But that's just how it. Just how it's gonna be. It's just what's going to have happened. Now, if we hadn't complied with that mandate, essentially what would have happened is somebody would have been beaten for breaking the law and not following the noble's mandate. Those beatings are often uh, carried out by the military, and as you can see, our military literally just, someone became a mace lord, that person there, you can see they have a different helmet on their sprite and a longer beard to represent how much cooler they are than this regular maceman over here. That means they've reached the halfway point on the skill track. Skills go from 1 to 10. They've reached at least level 10. Looks like the leather armor is nearly done. The armor stands are not. And we're going to need those to make our barracks. Let's get rid of that mouse. How are you doing on those? He's on tables. Okay. Now, of course, it is taking a while to do anything with these masons because I still haven't set up their stone stockpile. It's one of those things I've been meaning to get around to and I keep forgetting. But you know what? For now, we can use just the archery targets to set this up. 
So this works slightly differently than when you're making a standard training barracks. You need to press R to make this an archery range. You can see it's already discounted the other archery stand. It's not going to count towards this range. We're going to have to set these up differently. So press enter to be done. And then we have to choose the firing direction, which right now is left from right. Which isn't going to work. We need this thing to fire from right to left. Which it's... There we are. From right to left. Then we can press enter. We're going to do the same thing down here. We're going to press A. Choose right to left. Which means the dwarves will stand over on this side of the room and shoot this way. So now, let's take a look in our dwarf therapist at our new guys. A lot of these guys are detailing things. What are you doing? Making leather helmets. Well, that's fine for you. What we're going to do, we're going to just, at random, we're going to pick five of these guys. We're going to turn them into military. Two. Three. Four. Five. There we are. So those are going to be our five range dwarves. So how do we do this? Well, same way we go the other way. We went, we go military, and we go C, create squad. But, oh, that option's not there. Why? Well, we need to pick a new noble. We need a new militia captain. We have our um, militia commander, Rakust, who heads the entire military. But we now need to pick someone to head up this next thing. Fickard, congratulations, you are a skilled leader. So we're going to go to military, create squad, archer uniform. This is the inks of shooting, apparently. And now we're just going to go down, and these highlighted green guys, they're already in another squad, so we can ignore those entirely. And we're looking with anyone with military in their name who is not green. So Fickard was the first one. He's a good leader, so there we are. There's another, there's another, there's another. There's another. That's all five. So those guys will now go pick up quivers. They'll go pick up their leather armor. And to do that, what we're actually going to quickly do, we're going to go to E for equipment. And on the inks of shooting, we're going to hover over them. We're going to press R, which is replace clothing. That means they're going to, instead of wearing just their shoes, they're actually going to get those leather low boots and put those on. There's a bug right now in Dwarf Fortress where instead of um, wearing armor over the clothes, they will just decide that their clothes are armor and not wear their, their armor at all. <clears throat> oh, Militia Commander now requires... No, Captain of the Guard, Fickard, requires a lot of things as well. So we're going to have to get on with that. And Rakust, no. Oh, Erush is the mayor. And they don't think their room is cool enough anymore. So what we're going to do, instead of making an entire new room, we're going to cheat a bit. We're going to press D for designate. We're going to press E for engrave and we are just going to go along their walls here and we're going to carve them a bunch of murals and all this does is those guys with the engraving skill will run along and they'll basically engrave cool artwork into the walls and make make those nobles feel better about themselves but we're not quite finished up here yet, so we're going to go with squad. So we're going to go in here. We're going to highlight the inks of shooting, and we're going to press T to allow them to train on these ranges. We're going to press squad B. I'm going to press T for train. And you can see there he is already. Is that? That's... So those guys are now training up in their uh, training archery range. They are wasting bolts doing this. Normally, I would just make a bunch out of wood. Not really an option here. But they do have their crossbows. They do have some bolts. I think these are the bone bolts from all of the uh, the other stuff they're doing. They can only train two at a time. That is by design. Normally, in my normal forts, I will have giant shooting galleries of 20 plus archery ranges. I just can't afford the bolts here. These guys are going to level up quite slowly. But that is the price we pay it for maintaining our supply of bolts. I had a, a, um, a fortress built on the side of a mountain. And essentially the entire fortress was iron. The entire mountain was just tetra... Not tetra, right? Uh, hematite. Just an entire 
mountain of hematite, which is a base material for iron. You can get iron out of multiple ores, but we had a bunch of this hematite. And we just made, uh... Yeah, just... I forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah, we just made so many bolts that I had a massive shooting gallery. It was fantastic. There was plenty of things to hunt there, too, as well, so... I wasn't actually using the iron bolts. I'll show you what we can do, actually. If we go to military... We go to the inks of shooting. And then... Actually, no, how do we do this again? Military, equipment... And then I think we go... Shift M for material. No, it's not in there. Is it... Training... No. Squad B. No. Hmm. There is a way that you can restrict what materials are used. So it's definitely from this military screen. The inks of shooting. We go to... F for ammunition. Bolts 100. But what we can do... Is on the inks of shooting... There, you see, they'll use any bolts, and they'll pick up 250 of them, and train. What I can do, is I can press Shift-M for material. Tell them to use only wood or only... So, wood bolts. I can then shift combat. They will only use Shift-C for combat. They will only now use wood bolts for training. I can, again... I can... Add an item... To the inks of shooting... No. How have I done that? Military. Ammunition for the inks of shooting. I can... C to add an item. Add bolts. And then what I can do is again, Shift M for material here. Metal. And then Shift T. Now in combat, they will carry 100 metal bolts. Again, Shift C. Bolts. I can then shift C to get rid of combat, shift M, and then allow them to use wooden bolts also for training. So if there are any wood or bone bolts lying around the fortress, they can go pick those up, fire them at targets. But that's not all. We are also going to uh, make this a standard training room for the inks of shooting, because we need to do one more thing before we're finished with them, which is to go into their equipment, the inks of shooting, we need to weapon... We need to allow them to pick an individual melee weapon of their choice. Oh, what did I just do? Uh, I told them not to wear armor. There we are. So, final thing, weapon. Individual choice melee. Those guys should now also go pick up some axes and or swords. And they can then train with those as well as with their crossbows. Which is pretty cool. We don't have the weapon rack yet, but you know what? We're going to ignore that for now because we have a nobleman's room to finish off. So we're going to build the doors down here. We're going to build these ones out of wood. So go with cigar web into the main and then we'll go with high wood doors into these other places. Somebody just left their dress on the floor. I'm guessing somebody had a good time in here. So we're going to fill this room with some tables and chairs. Now, pretty much the only person who is going to be eating in this room will be the Count themselves. But that doesn't really matter. Because they are the only person... Where was I going with that? Uh, yeah, they're the, they're the only person eating in there. But they need fancy things around them. They just cannot tolerate not having the absolute best stuff. That's why we're giving them a lot of decorative items. We don't have the statues yet, but that's okay. 
Now, if we press nobles, so Erush is still in a modest office and modest dining room and still requires decent. So we're going to have to put some more stuff in there. But the other thing we can do is just designate and engrave. We can just select absolutely everything and they will literally put artwork on the floor and the ceiling of his uh, office and make it better. Now the size of the room also affects how good it is. Okay, so Q. I'm going to press R to make this a bedroom. We're going to extend this out. Add this who English the Baron gets that room. And she has a display of uh, dwarven wealth between all that wood she has in there. I would have given her like wooden chairs and stuff as well, but it would have just been a bit much to make right now. Okay, there we are. We'll make that her dining room. Give that to Ingish. Awesome. Let's see how she feels. Ingish still requires a tomb, a weapon stand, and an armor rack. The tomb we can get on another time. For now, we can throw an armor stand there. They're still making weapon racks. But to give you an idea, you see the difference between these red requires and these yellows? Red means they have nothing. They need a tomb. She doesn't have one. She is upset about it. Yellow means they need something better than they have, but they, they have the minimum requirements, but they're not happy with what they've received. So someone with an office, say someone needs like a spectacular office and they have a meager one, it will show up yellow. That means they can perform their function because they have what they by 100% necessity require, but what they don't have is something that meets the standard of their title. They don't have something good enough to uh, represent how noble and cool they are. But, now that people are too depressed to do their jobs, I think we're going to uh, end this episode off here. As usual, folks, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye -bye.